Our spiritual meal today is going to be drawn from three passages. The first passage I'm going to read is uh, Second Chronicles, chapter 16. Chapter 16, and I'm going to be looking at verse 9a, the first part of verse 9. The word of the Lord says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. The second installment of our meal, spiritual meal, comes from Isaiah 66, verses 1 and 2. Isaiah 66. I'm reading from verses 1 and verse 2. Verse 1 and verse 2. The word of the Lord says, Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man I will look, even to him that is poor, and of a contrite spirit, and it trembleth at my word. The last installment, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. The title of our sermon today, Headlining. Headlining. I think that's a good topic for all timers like us who are advanced in age, but for the younger generations, maybe we could give a, a more current version to the topic Trending, trending. Headlining for us, the old. Trending for those that are in the digital age. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Father in heaven, the message for today is very, very clear and unique, targeted. So we are praying, Lord, that um, each one of us who is here takes full advantage of this message. Be with the preacher, anoint his lips, make him say what you exactly want him to say. Cut out fluff and trivia from this sermon so that somebody, somebody might be saved. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Just a few minutes before we came, to church, our firstborn daughter called to tell us she was rushing our second born daughter to hospital. Our daughter is in pain, excruciating pain, abdominal pain. And uh, the update we got was that they have arrived in the uh, emergency room, and they are in the process of uh, doing some, some tests. You know, in that part of the world where uh, our children live, there's something that you, you need to know if you are there and you get sick. When you get to hospital, you may bring up yourself there or you may go by uh, by ambulance, but when you get there, if you say 
I'm suffering from chest pain. You become a priority. You, you skip the line. Every doctor, every nurse, uh, leave whatever they are doing to come and attend to you. Because you are clearly an emergency. You are an emergency. You know, I, I'm supposed to prime you for chemistry. That's the, the whole idea. I am priming you, the uh, immediate audience, for care meeting because our care meeting starts tomorrow. I'm also priming the uh, virtual audience, you know, the, the blessing of technology that we can preach here and uh, the message can ripple across the world. So we are also priming you for care meeting. I know that in the Northern Hemisphere, it's camp meeting season, as we talk. And so is it in the Southern Hemisphere, this is season for camp meeting. So the message is all about camp meeting. The message is all about camp meeting. Now, let me start with a disclaimer. This message is not for everyone. It's not an omnibus message. Uh, it's not a message for everyone. This message is very targeted. It's a message to someone who is saying, enough is enough. I have been going to care meetings year after year, carrying my burdens, coming back, picking them up where I left them. And so I, I am deciding that 2022 will be different. Care meeting this year is going to be different for me. I want to steal the headlines. I want to steal the headlines. You see, my dear friend, when we go to committee, we look forward to congregating with many people. It is very easy to be a statistic when you go to committee. It's easy to be background noise or accompaniment to those who are coming to receive their blessing. When you go to camp meeting this year, refuse to be a statistic. Tell the devil, enough is enough. I am going to steal the headline. I'm going to be headlining. I'm going to be trending in the heavenly courts, not the earthly courts. So, this message is very specific. It's for someone who is throwing caution to the wind. They don't care about what somebody else is thinking, what somebody else is saying. When they go to committee, they are going to wrestle with God, just like Jacob did. All night, Jacob wrestled with God. And in the morning, because he had prevailed, the angel of the Lord said, let me go. But Jacob refused. He said, I am not letting you go before you bless me. The Lord's eyes which range and which run to and fro are looking for somebody who is saying, enough is enough. I will not let you go before you bless me. 
This morning, dear friend, I'm not speaking to everyone. I'm speaking to somebody. Somebody who has had an illness for a long time. Defying treatment. You have been from hospital to hospital. The prognosis looks bad. And you are telling yourself, I am going to care meeting. Congratulations, you are coming to care meeting. When you come to care meeting, refuse to be a statistic. Refuse to be a footnote. Headline, care meeting. Let heaven know you are at care meeting. Let heaven know you are not going to let go until you receive your healing. I'm talking to somebody who is refusing to come to terms with their condition. You know, the greatest hindrance to breakthroughs in our lives, in our Christian lives, is that we, we become comfortable with our adversity. We become comfortable with our poverty. We become comfortable with our illnesses so that when we go to these big gatherings, we go accompanying those that are going to receive a blessing and we come back the same way we went because we never claimed our blessing. I'm talking to somebody like Jacob today. And my dear friends, when you feel during the course of this short message that um, I have targeted you and uh, you resonate with uh, the message that has come to you, I invite you to come and stand with me here. We're going to have a big prayer at the end. But I want to talk to somebody. I'm not talking to everyone. I'm talking to somebody. Do you have a situation that you have become cozy within? You, you, you look at your situation. Uh, let me talk to Sir Lucy right now. Because you're going to care meeting. I'm talking to Sir Lucy, the entity Sir Lucy. Enough is enough. Enough is enough, so Lucy. Enough is enough. We are the premier institution, Adventist institution, uh, this hemisphere, this side of the world. Are we the head or are we the tail? God is looking for somebody who is going to intercede for Solusi the way Daniel interceded for his people, confessed the sins of his people. And when Daniel had interceded, as somebody is going to intercede for Solusi during this camp meeting season, an answer is going to come, just like it came to Daniel. When the angel came to Daniel after he had fasted and prayed, the angel said, Oh, man, greatly esteemed. Daniel was trending in heaven. His name was headlining the news in heaven. And the angel came and said, Daniel, you are greatly esteemed. He headlined. God is looking for somebody who is going to intercede for Solusi. To say, Lord, what Solusi has gone through is enough. Enough is enough. <laughs> How do you give a lecturer a salary that a vendor in Bulawayo makes in a week? You pay a salary to a lecturer for the whole month. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. I mean, how do you pay the administrator of this institution patents a measly salary and think that is normal? Enough is enough. How do you work for God and you can barely provide food on the table? Enough is enough. God is looking for a Daniel who is going to intercede for Solusi and say, Oh Lord, forgive my people. 
Open the windows of heaven. We want to see floodgates at Solusi. Abundance at Solusi. Because somebody has cried to the Lord and said, enough is enough. Are you the one who is going to trend in heaven? Are you the one God is going to highlight and say, I see my servant, I see my daughter, I see my son who has interceded for Solusi and headlined Solusi in the courts of heaven for the Lord to release his blessings upon this hallowed ground. Are you going to be the one? I'm looking for somebody to resonate with this. If you are resonating and saying, I want to go and intercede for Solusi, so that Solusi may not be the tail anymore, but Solusi may be the head. I want somebody to come and stand with me because you are going to pray for Solusi. And when you come and stand interceding for Solusi, your name is going to be headline in heaven. Solusi is going to trend in heaven. I'm calling for somebody who is saying, I want to be the one to stand and intercede for Solusi. You know, I, I really applaud our church because they have a philosophy of small churches. We, we don't have mega churches as Adventists. You know that. Maybe the biggest church we have, maybe 3,000 members, maybe five, if you are lucky. But we, we, as soon as they grow, we divide them. Because we want small churches, correct? But do you know that uh, every year, every Adventist has a mega church experience when they go to camp meeting? I mean, those camp meetings can, can, be, can be huge. We, we are talking of thousands of people coming to camp meeting. I'm reminded of this incident. Jesus had been to something similar to Camille. He was very young, 12 years of age. Jesus and his parents go to, this, uh, to these festivities in Jerusalem. And um, the festivities go very well. They go very well. And actually, they come to a conclusion. And uh, everybody is headed home. After some days, the parents of Jesus discover that he is not in the company of, 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 of the family as they are moving back home. And the parents retrace their steps back to Jerusalem, back to the place where the festivities had been held. And they find Jesus among scholars, asking difficult questions, scholars uh, struggled to answer. Answering difficult questions, scholars could not, could not, could not ask. And the Bible tells us that the parents of Jesus found him, and when they did, when they did, they told him, why did you get us through this? I mean, why did you drag us through this uh, trauma and anxiety? And Jesus reminded them, did you not know I'm about my father's business? Jesus went to the festivities and he stole the headlines towering higher than the scholars of the day because he was about his father's business. When you go to care meeting, what's going to be preoccupying you? I know care meetings. They're great opportunities to show off my latest camping equipment. Look, last year I used the grass and leaves. <laughs> this year is different, man. I have... Uh, Camping gear, camping equipment. 
Maybe last year you, you came to camp meeting on a, a scorch cart with some donkeys pulling your scorch cart, loaded with your belongings. But this year you say, man, it's different. I'm going to roll into the campgrounds on wheels, driving the latest. And I want everybody to show, to see me. It's an opportunity when you go to K meeting to show off how much you have acquired during the course of the year. Now, let me talk to ladies. I mean, ladies, how can we leave this out? You are going to K meeting. I mean, K meeting. We can start with hairstyles. Hairstyles. You will be there. You want them to see that you have been to the, to the hairdresser. You are with it. You are, you are, you are contemporary. Your, your, your fashion is not outmoded. You are with it. And let's, move, let's, move, let's move down to the wardrobe itself. I mean, I mean. Kemiri, perfect. Perfect time. It's a perfect time. It's like you are on the runway of a fashion show. Yeah. In the morning, morning services, then one outfit. Quickly, you get into another outfit. Before the day is over, a third outfit. Mm-hmm. And there are some who are going there for various reasons. Committing. But let me tell you, my dear friend, committing is not about travelogue. It's not about those trivial things that people go for. Committing is about headlining your need to God. Do you have a desperate and urgent need? Then go and take it to the Lord during committing. That's what camp meetings are for. I'm about to close, my dear friends, but I can't do it without uh, sharing the experience of Bartimaeus. Jesus was passing through Jericho, as we all know, and uh, Bartimaeus decided it's now or never. I'm going to get my, my healing, my miracle today, or I won't. And what did Bartimaeus do? He shouted. And those that were near him calmed him down. Throwing all caution to the wind, Bartimaeus even shouted the more. My, my dear friend, as we go to Camilla, I don't know what formula you're going to use. Some of you are going to shout like Bartimaeus. You are going to do something unconventional, something counterintuitive, something that has never been done. Do it! It's your moment. It's now or never. If heaven, whose eyes are raging and ranging from one side of the earth to the other, if God's eyes which roam to and fro spot you as you shout, you will headline and receive your miracle. If you are in a situation that is dire, a situation that is grim, a situation that is urgent and desperate, camp meeting is for you. It is for you. Away with the idea of going to camp meeting to just accompany those that are going to receive a blessing. Away with the idea of going to camp meeting for just becoming a footnote. Away with going to camp meeting with your burdens and coming back carrying your burdens. If big miracles are not happening to you, the problem is you choose to be in the background. You choose to be in the periphery. Camp meeting is not for them. Camp meeting is for you. I'm talking to somebody on the fence. They were not deciding to go to camp meeting this year. My friend, you're going to miss out. You have to be there. Not just as a statistic, not just as a number or somebody to balloon attendance. 
You are going to be there because you have something that you want God to do for you. Is there somebody this morning, my dear friends, who is saying, Lord, I'm going to camp meeting. And when I go, I want to occupy center stage in your presence so that I may trend, I may headline. It might take you prayer and fasting. It might take you wrestling like Jacob, prayer and fasting like Daniel. It might take you the study of God's word like Jesus did. Or you may simply shout to the Lord and cry out for help. Whatever method you are going to employ, God is okay with it. The idea is that you refuse to be in the background. You come to the foreground. You come to the center stage. You come to the front row seat because your case is desperate and you want urgent attention this committee. You know, dear friends, as I look at myself, I'm inviting somebody to come and stand with me now as we pray. As I look at myself, I have uh, many prayer requests. And I should admit that uh, uh, some of my burdens I, I've been cozy with. Uh, I, I no longer worry the Lord uh, with those problems. I know they are chronic. They are going to be with me till I die. So why bother the Lord? But let me tell you, after preparing this message and having this message preached to me, I experienced the conversion. When I go to camp meeting this year, I'm taking with me those impossible problems. And I'm not going to take a no for an answer. I'm going to wrestle with God. I'm going to fast and pray. I'm going to shout and cry until I get my response. I'm going to exercise violent faith. The faith that cannot take a no for an answer. And as I prepare to pray, to pray, I'm asking somebody to quickly come because we don't have much time. Somebody to quickly come and say, you know what? I mean, I'm going to camp meeting. I want to be in the front row seat. I want to be in the center. I want to headline. I want God to, to catch uh, to his attention to, to catch me and to, to, to respond to my, to, my, to my problems. Uh, dear friends, time is of the essence. We cannot be going to care meeting year in, year out without experiencing a difference in our lives. Why should you settle in that poverty when your father is so rich? The, the cattle on a thousand hills belong to him. Go to camp meeting this year and say, this is the year I am going to part company with poverty. Why should you languish in your misery, in your illness, when God is the healer? The great physician is going to be present at camp meeting. The great physician is going to heal somebody. Let that somebody be you. Skip the line. Because your situation is urgent, because your situation is desperate, every hand is going to be on deck. Heaven, heaven itself is going to attend to your situation. It's urgent, it's immediate, it's grim. Heaven is not going to, to, to ignore you. Remember what the book of Chronicles said? The eyes of the Lord, they are busy moving up and down. And God is looking for urgent cases. Not cases that can wait another year, but cases that want attention now. That's what God is going to do. As I told you, I have my list, and I'm going to be in the front row. I have my... Whether they bring lousy preachers to care meeting or dynamic preachers to care meeting, I DC, I don't care. I'm going to get my blessing anyhow. There is nothing that is going to deter me. The devil cannot prevent me. God rebukes him. I'm going to get my blessing. I'm going to wrestle. I'm going to fast and pray. I'm going to cry out. I'm going to, I'm going to pray to God. 
that I get my blessing. My dear friends, thanks for coming. The Lord is going to do it for you. As he's going to do it for me. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you for this primer to care meeting. We, we have many care meetings we have attended in the past. Just going there uh, as a matter of routine and uh, status quo, uh, settle for the minimum blessings that were available. But 2022 is different. We ain't going to settle for nothing less than our miracle. We ain't going to settle for anything less than a breakthrough. Lord, as an institution, there are some who are standing here to, to, to petition you to, to intercede for Solusi University. Lord, count me in. I'll be part of that group. Lord, we, we want you to do something big for Solusi, something huge, something that will turn heads as people look at Solusi soaring in terms of enrollment, in terms of work satisfaction, in terms of employee remuneration. We are going to intercede at camp meeting for Solusi University. It is the apple of your eye. It cannot afford to go down the drain when you are alive and well. This is the place you have chosen for workers to be trained to finish this gospel of the kingdom. So Solusi will rise. Solusi will be the head. And the whole world will know. Solusi is going to care meeting and Solusi is not settling for nothing less than a mega mega breakthrough. Lord, this message targeted us as individuals, not as groups. We know why we are standing. We have something on our heart. We have a burden. We have something that has defied solution. Doctors have told us, go home and die. Lord, we are praying in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. The name to whom everything in heaven, everyone in heaven, everything, everyone on earth, everything under the earth is going to bow. The name of Jesus. The only name that has been given among men through whom we may be saved in the name of Jesus. Lord, give us a breakthrough. Conquer disease. Remove poverty. Change our lives. Cleanse our lives of sin. Remove those sins that so easily beset us. This care meeting is going to be different because we are going to see your hand in our lives. Lord, when we shall return from care meeting for the rest of the year and for the rest of our lives, we shall continue to give you glory and praise for what you would have done, for what you are going to do for us. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the privilege of care meeting. We are going, but we are not going to settle for anything less than the headlines. We want to headline this care meeting in glory. We want to headline it in heaven. Heaven, our name should trend to say, look at, her, look at my son, look at my daughter. She is at care meeting. She is the, the, the center of what is happening there. Because our answers are going to come and we are going to thank you eternally. Lord, we have prayed these things, believing and trusting that you are going to answer them Indeed, you have already answered them. Because we have prayed these things in Jesus' name, let the church say amen. Amen. Thank you, my dear friends. We can go back to our seats.